Okay, so this time we're going to do a rotate right. This is the last of the shift instructions that we've not done yet. There's only four, and this is one of them. Uh, this is very similar to rotate left. It moves the bits in either the accumulator or a memory one place to the right. And bit seven, which is the leftmost bit, is filled with the current value of the carry flag, and bit the old bit zero becomes the new carry flag. So again, it's rotating, but it's using the carry. It's like rotating around with the carry. So this should be very similar to the other one. So let's just get started with that one, I suppose. Let me, I'll just copy one of the, we'll do the accumulator one again first, just like we did before. Let's find one of the accumulator rotates. It's like one of these. So um, we should do something, yeah, we should do something very similar to what we did before, maybe which is uh, we should see if we can just shift, take a zero value and just shift the carry flag in. So if we have something that starts with the carry flag at true and there's nothing in the accumulator, if we do rotate right once, then at the end of it, we expect uh, this in the accumulator. So the, the carry flag gets shifted into bit seven and there we go. And that is, uh, that's the value we expect. I'm doing it in binary because it just makes it easy. It just shows that there will be, you know, a one put there. And at the end of it, the carry flag, yeah, will be set to false because the zero that was in there got shifted out into there afterwards. Uh, zero is false for this one because afterwards it's not zero anymore, but negative happens to be true on this one. So it's can shift, ooh, shift and early swore then can shift the carry flag I can shift the carry flag into into the operand I'll call it because it's going to be a memory address or the in this case it's the accumulator but in other cases it could be the memory address all right I think that's a good enough test I'll set that negative to false before so just making sure everything's different before we start I need to define this Okay, so I expect, yeah, instruction not handled. So as before, we're gonna go straight in and put that in, or try and put it in. And this is, oh, so this is gonna operate on the accumulator. What do we need to do? Shift the A register right by one. So that's one thing it's gotta do. Oh, it's got a consumer cycle. There we go. So let's put that in and just see what we get. So we're doing a shift there, but we're completely ignoring the accumulator. And there we go. And the value at the end is wrong because we never shifted our carry bit in. So we need to, after this happens, we need to or in, yeah, we need to, uh, let me just think, what do we need to do? Bit seven is filled with the current value of the carry flag. So we need to, and in the negative bit. I mean, I'm gonna call it the negative bit flag, but it's just bit seven this in this case, isn't it? Uh, if we look at that value there, that is basically the value that we want. So we're gonna and it with that if the carry flag is true. So in effect, that should set our, oh, wait a second, I need to or it, not and it. Right, so we've got the correct value in there, but now the carry flag afterwards is wrong and the negative flag is wrong. Now we can get those right, uh, get the negative flags right by just setting the, we've got a function that sets the zero and negative flags because zero, zero gets set if, if the value is zero and negative gets set if the result is set. So that should fix one of our problems, which it does. And now we've just got the carry flag being wrong. So bit seven, is filled with the, uh, the current, bit seven is filled with the current result of the carry flag. Bit, the old bit zero becomes the new carry flag, okay. So we have to take, in fact, let's just do something. Let's just do something that just says, 
uh, we're just going to set the we're going to set the carry flag, and we're just going to set it to what we want it to be, which is false, because that fixes our test. Yeah, it does. So now we need to create another test um, that can definitely uh, cause this to fail as well. So we need something that can set the carry flag to true. So let's do another test, and this one must be a test that sets the carry flag to true somehow. So what would this one be? This one needs a value, well this one will just be the value of 1, because if 1 gets shifted, rotated to the right, that will go into the carry flag. So let's set the carry flag to false to start with. And 0 and negative are all false. So we expect the accumulator to be 0 afterwards, because this 1 gets shifted out, nothing gets shifted in from the carry flag. But we do expect the carry flag to be true afterwards, that's the thing we wanted. And we expect the zero to be true because the value is zero and we expect the negative to be false because zero is not a negative number. Uh, can shift a value into the carry. So let's just see if that gets us another failing test, which it does. So that's made our, that's made our existing test fail now. Sorry, that's made the yeah, well that test fails, but it's made our existing code show up that it's not correct. So that's the bit we can fix now. So this thing needs to be set to the old bit seven. Uh, oh, it's the old bit zero. So um, there was a bit in here before where I called it bit one, and I think that was wrong. Was it in here? Yeah, bit one. Uh, I might actually move that out. It's actually bit zero, isn't it? It's not really bit one. Yeah, I've called it bit zero there. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, that's technically that. I've just got some leading zeros on it, but essentially, yeah, that's a bit zero. Let's move that out into the, into the place where we're storing this as well. bit zero. So these are like, uh, these aren't really processor status bits anymore. These are really just masks. Zero, let's call it the zero bit mask. Zero bit, let's just call it zero bit. So we've just got a couple of like masks for these particular bits that we're interested in. I might as well move that out there because we're going to use this a lot I think. We've already used it quite a bit. Let's just see just see how that fails. It doesn't fail. Ah. Get rid of that one. Whoops. Yep. Yeah. Call it new bit zero. I'm doing a bit of refactoring on the old stuff here, but there we go. Right. Back to where we were. Uh, we've now got a constant for this bit zero that we're interested in. In fact, I think that's actually, that might actually be the bit of code that we're looking for. Um, let's go back to where we were. <clears throat> yeah, we need to save whatever the carry flag was before. So if the carry flag was set to, oh no, so it's the old bit zero we're looking for. So if we take the accumulator and we and it with the zero bit. Uh, so that just masks out everything but that bit. That is the old bit zero now. And that is what we want to uh, that's what we want to put into the carry flag afterwards. In fact we don't really need to we can do it like this, I think. Yeah, so that's just saying if the bit was if the zero bit was set before, then that's what we're going to put into the carry afterwards. So in effect, this makes all our tests pass now, and it does. So that's our new code, pretty much for rotate right. I think that's 
all we need, but we are gonna have to do the other dressing mode, so we're gonna have to refactor this the same way we did the other ones. But let's just see that we haven't that we can't just put in another test that maybe just to test because we've only really tested like something with zero in there. We've got a one in. Let's let's do something just a little bit more complicated. Let's do something that has a carry flag to start with. And let's just put some weird bits in there. Let's put something with let's put something that will shift into the carry flag afterwards. What else have we got? And let's just put a few random bits in there. Like that. And that should do it. So what value do we expect after that? Uh, we expect this all to have been shifted along one, but the carry flag will be shifted in like that. And this one here will end up in the carry flag, so the carry flag will remain at true. Zero will be false, and negative will be true on this one. So I think that's a reasonable test for that one. Let's set the zero to true for. Now, what would we call this one? Can rotate. Uh, I don't know. Let's just say a number. Because that's really all it does, this one. It just does a number. So it's just one little extra test. I still expect that to pass, and it does. So I think I've got enough tests there to consider that working, really. So I think what I want to do now, have a look at doing the zero page version of maybe just one of these. And then we'll work out what we've got to refactor to get this to work. So, so again, this is the same as before. What we do is the next value stores the address in the zero page, and then in the zero page, oops, we store the value which we want zero in this case. And then that's what we check at the end. That should give us a, oh, we need to put a zero page structure on that. So let's add that. Zero page is 66, execute order 66. Right. Should have an instruction not found on that. Should is instruction not handled. So let's put that one in. So we want again we want something similar to these where we are taking the value from the zero page, reading it into an operand, uh, we do something with it and then we write it back. Now the thing we want to do is basically all this code here. So let's just copy that in for now. Is this where I should refactor it? Maybe I should. Let's just do this for now. I'm just going to not do anything. Oops, not going to do anything to it. I'm just going to put the upper end back in and I'm going to write it back. Let's just start like that. that doesn't do the operation that just reads out of memory and writes it back and of course that doesn't work but it shows that we've still got that failing test so this is the bit where I want to take this and factor it out up here whoa so this is going to be rotate right And instead of operating on the A register, we're going to operate on this operand. Right, I think that's it. So let's go back and see if we can where were we? Somewhere miles away down here. It's a big switch statement this now. This can all get replaced with this. So that 
technically that code's been refactored into there and that still leaves us with just this test failing which it does one test failing so again the, the results of that is that, that hasn't changed that function it's just refactored it which is what we want that's why we would do the test first and then change it so that we know we haven't broken anything and then in here uh, we can just reuse that code now and in effect this fixes all our problems and this goes away oh no it doesn't because I've done the same thing I did last time which is uh, it took five cycles and expected two and that's because that is wrong it is actually five it says it there five cycles so let's see that that works which it does so let's take the other three tests and make zero page versions of those as well is it three? Two tests. Yeah. So this will be zero page. It's five cycles. Let's copy this bit of code because it's going to be very similar. We've got one in there. And we test that zero page value at the end. So that's good. And this one's similar. Okay, let's see if that still passes. We've basically just taken all the tests that we wrote before and made the zero page version of them. Uh, that doesn't work because I've got, why doesn't that work? Because these are zero page, zero page, and that is zero page. So I just had the test wrong there, but I think once more. Okay, there we go. So that is the accumulator version of that done. That's the zero page version of that done, and essentially that's rotate right done. We've written all the code we're going to need at this point. The rest of the instructions are just going to be very similar to this, except with a different dressing mode and they're going to call the same function. Basically, the code that we've written really is this. This is the bit that we wanted. So I'm just going to go to warp speed and I'm going to do the other three addressing modes, same way I did the other ones. And then we have rotate right completed. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so that's it, I think. That is rotate right done. That's all the shifts done, actually. 55 tests wrote for the shifts. So that looks like that's all those done. And that leaves, believe it or not, we're almost there and having this thing fully working. Load store is done, register transfers are done, stack operations are done, logical's done, arithmetic's done, increments and decrements are done, shifts are done, jumps and calls are done, I believe. We did that one. Yeah, that's done. Uh, and I think RTS is done on those, yep. Yeah. Uh, branches, I remember doing those. Status flags are done, that's easy. So we just actually, it's just these system functions and I think NOP is done, because we did that one. NOP is done, yeah, look at that. That's all it does. Uh, so we've just got two left to do, which is the interrupts. Force an interrupt and return from interrupt. And these ones, not sure how these would be because they they don't have millions of addressing modes because they they only do one thing. So we're gonna have a look at those in the next one. Uh, but that's all that's left: force an interrupt and return from an interrupt. And then I think all the instructions have been implemented. And then we'll have to see if we can actually run, find a program that we can compile and try and run on this thing and see if it works. Oh, I mean decimal mode for the arithmetic hasn't been implemented, but that's that's a thing so yeah that would have to be implemented for this to be fully working so the next time we are going to attack maybe both of these together 
or maybe we do them one at a time, I don't know. It might be we have to do those together. So we'll see about that in the next one.